a 20-year-old student who had been preparing to study at home, disappeared under very strange circumstances. From the very first moments of the investigation, there were many unusual and contradictory leads, but it was impossible to find her for three years. Eventually, the detectives made some progress in the case. However, the more they uncovered, the more confusing the story became. As a result, this disappearance became one of the most mysterious cases in the state. Even after it was officially closed, many still had questions. Holly Bobo was born on October 12, 1990, in a small American town called Darden, in the state of Tennessee. It was a quiet and peaceful place with a population of only a few hundred people, far from the major cities. Holly lived there with her parents and older brother. The family enjoyed spending time in nature, hiking, fishing, and swimming in the nearby small rivers. Holly was also passionate about singing and often participated in church services. After high school, Holly decided to pursue a medical degree and become a nurse. She enrolled at the university in a nearby city. By 2011, when Holly was 20 years old, she dedicated most of her time to studying and trying to achieve the highest grades. In addition, she had a boyfriend with whom she had been together since high school, and the couple had big plans for the future. Holly continued to live with her parents, as the university was only a few minutes away by car. She wasn't in a hurry to move out because her father had built their house and it held great sentimental value for their family. On April 13th, Holly woke up at half past five in the morning to get ready for school. A few hours later, her parents left for work and her brother was still asleep. During this time, her brother called her to let her know he was going hunting on a large plot of land owned by Holly's grandmother and asked for permission to hunt there. They spoke for a few minutes and Holly told him that she was getting ready to go to university. After their conversation, Holly's neighbor went outside and was about to get into his car when he heard a loud, piercing scream coming from the direction of Holly's house. Worried that something had happened to one of his neighbors, he immediately called his mother, who then contacted Holly's mother. She tried calling Holly, but the girl didn't answer. Concerned, she asked her husband to go check on her daughter. At the same time, Holly's brother, who was still asleep, was woken by their dog barking loudly in the backyard. When he looked out the window, he saw Holly standing in the garage, talking to a man he didn't recognize. The man was wearing camouflage, which made Holly's brother think he might have been someone who regularly hunted on their grandmother's property. He couldn't hear the conversation, but from Holly's tone, he guessed she seemed upset. He decided to call his mother to ask whether Holly was going to school that day or staying home. His mother interrupted him and shouted that the man in the garage wasn't Holly's boyfriend. She told him to immediately grab the gun and shoot the man. Surprised, the brother asked if she was serious, and she responded with a simple yes before hanging up. He returned to the window and saw that Holly was walking toward the forest with the man in camouflage walking alongside her, holding her hand. At this point, he noticed that the man was much taller and larger than Holly's boyfriend. Still confused, the brother tried calling Holly, but she didn't pick up. He also tried reaching her boyfriend, but he didn't answer. Meanwhile, Holly's mother had already called the police. However, since she worked in a neighboring district, the call was routed to a different police station. Shortly after, the brother called his mother again and told her that Holly had walked into the forest with the man. The brother grabbed his gun and went outside to search, but by the time he arrived, Holly was nowhere to be found. Inside the garage, he saw traces of blood, and he immediately called the police. The officers arrived a few minutes later, but there was still no sign of Holly. The brother told them about the blood in the garage and described the strange man, saying he wore camouflage and a cap, which obscured his face. He also mentioned the man had long, dark hair that reached his back, and that he had a low voice. 
The situation struck the police as unusual, but they didn't take immediate action. The local department lacked experience with such cases, and in the crucial first hours, they didn't search the forest, seal the garage, or interview the neighbors. By the time Holly's parents returned home, they realized the police weren't doing much to find their daughter. After pushing for more action, the officers finally began searching the forest, speaking with neighbors, and bringing in forensic scientists to analyze the blood in the garage. They confirmed that Holly's boyfriend was not the man seen with her in the forest, as he was known to be hunting at the time. Tracking Holly's phone, the police discovered that it first moved north for 30 minutes, then turned around and headed in the opposite direction. The last signal came from the forest, just a few hundred meters from her house, after which the phone was turned off. The police found the phone there with the SIM card removed, but there were no traces of Holly. The search continued for several days, but no progress was made. Meanwhile, strange events began occurring in the town. Residents started finding items belonging to Holly. First her food container, then a check with her name on it, and another resident discovered her school card. These findings were puzzling, but the police were still unable to figure out who was leaving these items or why. The investigation expanded to include a list of all local residents. Soon the police focused on a man named Terry who had a history of abuse. After looking into his background, they found that his victims were similar to Holly in age and appearance. Terry also shared a similar build to the man seen with Holly in the forest, so he became a prime suspect. They obtained a search warrant for his home, but no evidence was found. The police installed a wiretap on his phone and monitored his communications for weeks, but still found no proof linking him to Holly's disappearance. As the investigation dragged on, the search area continued to expand and more volunteers joined the effort, but still, no new leads emerged. By the time the police had to suspend the ground search and focus on possible suspects, Holly's family was devastated. They felt the police had failed them, especially during the first 72 hours, which are critical in missing person cases. Despite their complaints and calls for a more aggressive investigation, Holly's fate remained unknown for three long years. Then, in March 2014, a breakthrough came when the police arrested a local man named Dylan. Known for his drug addiction, Dylan was brought in on charges of illegal weapon possession. During questioning, he unexpectedly revealed that he had seen Holly after her abduction. He claimed that on the day Holly disappeared, he visited his brother Zach and their friend Jason. In the living room, he saw Holly sitting in a chair looking terrified. Dylan said that his brother and friends had subjected Holly to violence and recorded the abuse. According to Dylan, Holly was killed shortly after the abduction, although he claimed he wasn't involved in her death. He also mentioned that his brother Zach had worn a camouflage suit that day. The police brought Zach and Jason in for questioning, but they denied any involvement in Holly's disappearance. They were both searched, but no concrete evidence was found. A woman later came forward, claiming that her ex-boyfriend, Jeffrey, had shown her a video in which a girl resembling Holly was being abused. According to her, the man in the video was Zach, and his brother Mark had filmed it. When the police confronted Jeffrey, he denied knowing anything about the video, even though his responses suggested otherwise. The police searched his home but found no evidence of the video. However, they were able to confirm that Zach's brother and friend Jason had been in communication with Jeffrey in the days leading up to Holly's disappearance. Despite a lack of direct evidence, the investigation continued and police uncovered more troubling details. A man named Shane who had been in contact with Zach on the day of Holly's disappearance, was eventually implicated. During his interrogation, Shane admitted to knowing where Holly's body was hidden, but he failed to lead police to her remains. Shortly after, in September 2014, some hunters discovered her body in a remote part of the forest. The cause of death was confirmed to be a gunshot wound to the skull. 
it was clear that Holly had been murdered shortly after her abduction. Police arrested several suspects, including Dylan, Jason, and Zach. The investigation eventually led to Zach's conviction. In the end, it was revealed that several people knew about Holly's fate long before her body was found. However, not everyone was convinced that justice had been fully served. Some questions still linger about who else was involved and how much the police knew during their investigation. Despite the conviction of Zach, the case remains surrounded by mystery, with some believing that other parties may have been responsible for Holly's tragic death. Thank you for watching.